A documentary of Cherubim and Seraphim. Cherubim and Seraphim Movement Church is one of the most unique Christian assembly among the Christian faith. The church is a spiritual gathering woven around the basic teachings of Jesus Christ as recorded in the Bible during his prophetic ministry on earth. The church began as a spiritual commission in 1925 under the divine auspices of his grace, Baba Aladura, late Saint Moses Orimolade Tuonlashe. Moses Orimolade was born in a town called Ikare. The uh, late Pamusuri Malade uh, was born at Ikare. Uh, his history is very mysterious. Uh, there have been a lot of um, documents pertaining to him. That he was born, the day he was born, he started talking. And uh, when he grew up, because he came from uh, a family that is uh, very traditional, perhaps they be believe very much in the occultic um, system. So that brought a lot of confusion to the people of that particular dispensation. And uh, we learned that, um, of, course, of course, there are not enough documents to back up these claims. But we begin to see that all the claims that um, they presented for Baba Uri Malade of blessed memory, all of them have come to pass. All his visions, his evangelism. In fact, he started as a ministry, as a, a missionary, as an evangelist. He never wanted to have a church, but I think with time, the people who were around him felt that there should be a Chiribin and Seraphim church, and they called it a band because they never even knew that it was going to be as big as this. But from the songs of Kino uh, Kenyaye, um, Kiribu Serafu, we now begin to believe that this vision is from God, it's not man made, and as such, God sent Uri Maladi from my own research. I was told by the Lord that God sent Uri Maladi to come and evangelize the world through the word of God. And that was what he was doing. He was called by God from his youth and chosen as his divine instrument to pilot his evangelism. The founder started the church as a divine message sent to him from God to the black nation and the entire world. Shortly after he received this prophetic call and unction, the Lord revealed to him after days of praying and fasting for the commencement of the commission with the name Cherubim and Seraphim. The word Cherubim and Seraphim is a biblical injunction that symbolizes God's purity and the relevance of God's vision and most significantly the ever presence of God's divine power in his sanctuary. The founder of the church began his prophetic ministry in a humble beginning with few members as a church in Lagos within a space of months. The church began to experience a massive turnaround in all the facets of human quest and endeavor. Practically was the prayers led by the man of God to regain the unconsciousness of late Captain Abiodun Emmanuel.
Captain Abiodun Emmanuel saw an angel in a vision and went into a trance from 18th to 25th June 1925 without recovery. A lot of spiritual personalities prayed for her, but there was no pragmatic solution. As her family began to swim in the turbulent ocean of confusion, the man of God was informed and he came and prayed for her. Immediately after the prayers, she regained her unconsciousness and became the first person and prophetess to see a vision in cherubim and seraphim. As a result of the power of God demonstrated in the commission, the captain joined the church with total submission and began with the man of God in the evangelistic work of God's kingdom. Cherubim and Sapu was established in 1925. But the movement was established in 1941 as a, as a conference. The first one, which was uh, the, the um, establishment of Kribba in 1925, was done by St. Moses Uri Malade from Fukare, who was sent to deliver the Kribba and Safu worldwide to the black nation. I call it Black Nation because uh, it is tailored for the use of black people and then to the whole world. For black people because uh, everything that black people will need, which was not brought with the first Christianity, was sent through Moses Orimalari Tumolashi of Ikare, who started uh, Vagnism in 1916 and continued to move around throughout the whole world. It was in Kano in 1920, it was in Lori, it was in uh, uh, Okeru, Obomaso, and they came to Lagos in 1924. And by 1924-25, Captain Abedon was in trance and uh, Musulmani was called to her side. He prayed for her and uh, she became conscious and since then they've been working together as uh, a group and by 1925 they named the church the Cherubim and Seraphim and that is how it started in Nigeria. Initially the church was called Cherubim and Seraphim but later on some discrepancies crept in and the church broke up into different orders. Today, the church has a lot of spiritual orders which are still under the initial emblem of the Cherubim and Seraphim Church. The Cherubim and Seraphim Movement Church began in 1941 as a then CNS Northern Conference under the leadership of her first chairman, the late Baba Aladura, Nathaniel T. Coker. Initially, it was a Northern affair, but later it sprang to other parts of the country. The mission and vision statement of the church is woven around the five-fold ministry of Christianity which includes prophecy, teaching of God's words, apostleship, pastorship and evangelism. The most pertinent concern of the church is the salvation of souls from the shackles of condemnation. The movement church has continued to follow the mega themes of the founder which centered on preaching, teaching, praying and healing. Cherubim and Seraphim believe absolutely in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, His birth, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. The Trinity is an integral part of the belief of CNS and the Bible as a textbook for spiritual nourishment. Our focus is to improve, and we are improving, we are progressing. So what I can call the criticism we are receiving from the Pentecostal is envy envy because all what they are criticizing us for now they are doing it when we are talking of anointing we started it when we are talking of uh, uh, fiji they are doing it and those days when we are doing fiji they said uh, we, we have the light and be doing this and be doing that they are doing the veggies now are they doing the same thing with us those days uh, they say off your light and do whatever you want to do. When it is not so, it was not so. So they are doing a lot of what we are started with. Only we cannot uh, program our own or punish it well. 
That is why there is not known. And you know the people who started uh, this, uh, this organization we are talking about, they are not learned. But now that learned people are being introduced into it, they welcome it, there are a lot of improvement now. Now let, let me tell you something. In this congregation that you have just met, we have several, not just one, several medical doctors. Uh, our national secretary is a doctor, doctor of philosophy. So this question of illiterate, it is true that initially when the church started, God called those people that were on the lower cadre of the society. But you see, those people on the lower cadre of the society, they are, some of them are great-great-grandfathers now. Their children have trained to all over the world. So there's some kind of ignorance that is going on in the society. And that is why talking to you now is very, very important. And I hope that uh, our leaders will use this thing that you are doing to put it on the air nationally for people to see. We are not a bunch of illiterates at all. Theologically, we have three well-established theological colleges in Nigeria. One here in Kaduna, one in Ilori, and one in Lagos. I, I just want to mention those three. And then, of course, when you talk of people, in senior men in civil service, we have them. But you see, the Seraphim people are very humble people. They don't, they don't throw themselves up and down. They don't throw their weight up and down. No matter what position they are holding, you will never see them publish it. Because Jesus taught us humility. And if we are emulating and following Jesus, we must be humble. And that is what we are doing. On a final note, what are you going to tell the people watching this documentary concerning the wrong negative uh, perceptions of people about Cherubi and Seraphim? Because this thing is a very controversial issue. So how are you going to tackle it? What I'm going to tell the, the public is that this is a new dawn. The controversy has only come about because we have not done enough of publicity work. You know, that I know. But other than that, Cherubim and Seraphim is a Christian fold that is built on a solid rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a hymnal, our, our hymn book, that we sing in the church. Even though the major part of it is in vernacular in Yoruba. But I want to tell you that the original composition, which we are using up to today, there is no song you sing there that does not have a reference to the Holy Bible. So I want whoever is watching this thing that has had any misconceived opinion, let him come in and try us. I want to draw your attention to something. If you look at the ark there, that ark there, the ark, the round, the acting on that our place, it is written, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. That is the confirmation of the person that we serve, the God that we serve. If you go into the book of Revelation and the book of Isaiah, you are going to find that right in there. We are not serving any other thing other than the Almighty God. The I am that I am, the King of glory. So anybody that has had this type of misconception, all I want to tell them is that the test of the pudding is in the eating. They should come in and give themselves time to understand. Let me tell you something. I speaking to you, I'm not a Yoruba man. Where are you from, sir? I'm, I'm from Benue State. I'm a thief from Benue State. What time from Boston? is why we actually started the English service. Though we have started in other places, for instance, Glory, the English chapel has been in existence for more than 10 years now in Glory. But here we also felt there was need for it because we, one thing we discovered that a lot of our young members were leaving the church, probably because some of them were born up north here. They, could, they are not so fluent in Yoruba speaking. They rather speak English or Hausa instead of speaking uh, Yoruba. So we are trying to create an avenue where we can catch them and retain them within the church. That was the reason why we actually started the, uh, the English church.
chapel. Uh, some people, they have this erroneous conception that the church is purely Yoruba church. Perhaps uh, not too far from the fact that the man God used to start the church happened to be a Yoruba man, Moses Ori Malade. But if you read the history of Moses Ori Malade, he did not limit his evangelism to the Yoruba speaking areas. He visited so many places, even in the East. That's why you have a very strong base for CNS in the Onicha area. He visited those places and he preached, and all his converts were asked to go and join the existing churches there. So he came to the north and preached in the north. He went as far as Kano to preach the gospel. So it was not actually a religion for or a denomination for the Yoruba purely. No, it is for everybody. And today, we have so many of our branches in uh, Porakot. We have our branches in uh, Beni City. We have in Wari. In fact, we have our district headquarters in those places I've just mentioned. And uh, none of them has less than uh, 17 branches spread across this nation. There's no state of the Federation that we don't have uh, uh, branches. And therefore, that actually dictates that the church does not belong to exclusively to the Yoruba speaking people or to everybody who accept Christ. The Spiritual Commission of CNS also believes that God is the creator of the universe, who is the omnipotent, omniscience and omnipresent spirit, who is the beginning and the end of all things and beings. Well, on my own um, say on my own side, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, innovations we have introduced uh, we feel that uh, the Bible and God is very dynamic and whatever we don't find in the Bible We should be exposed. We should do away with them. That is what we have been doing on our own side But I know with time all these things will take place We need to re-educate and re the minds of our people to make sure that whatever we do is back up with the Word of God Otherwise people will give us names as they have been doing but efforts is on the Babalado has set up a committee of 21 uh, member committee uh, to make sure that um, whatever we feel that is going to bring a uh, sort of uh, reproach to the name of God, we do have some amendments to it. I think very soon we shall have a report from that end. Well, what I will say is that there is no perfect organization in this world. Then those people who are criticizing the children and seraphim do not know enough about the church. And they are not interested in knowing enough. What they want is to attract our members to their own place. We are not saying that everything is, is the perfect or good. Some practices are going on which we as I don't like. But that does not mean that the whole church is rotten. And I think what we are trying to improve every day, maybe you heard a lot we said on the hill there about what people are doing and so on. we don't like what, how they are doing it. So, but we, we are hoping that with a better understanding and the study of the Word of God, people will soon and will improve on their character and behavior and what they, they do so that they can become a true Christian body. But as I said, as individuals, we are, we are subject to the frailties of the human flesh. And, but that should not be counted against the whole church. The CNS Movement Church have been piloted for years by special anointed servants of God known as Baba Aladura. The first Baba Aladura was Nathaniel T. Koka from 1941 to 1971. The second Baba Aladura was His Grace O. Kalejai, 1971 to 1982. The third Baba Aladura was His Grace J.T. Agbola, 1982 to 1997. The fourth Baba Aladura was His Grace C.A. Shofarasin, 1997 to 2005. After the demise of the fourth Baba Aladura, His Grace, the Most Reverend Samuel A. Abidoe, was chosen as the spiritual father and chairman of CNS Movement Church worldwide till this. Number one thing I want to say is that the Church of Jesus Christ is not Pentecostal, OIC, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Anglican. The Church of Jesus Christ is made of people that have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and you find them 
in all the denominations of the world. And so there are fine, fine Christians that believe in Jesus Christ, that are members of the CNS, Celestial Church, Catholic Church, and so forth. So I am not one of those that deride or look down on any Christian group or Christian denomination. I believe Jesus Christ has the disciples among us all. Not everyone in even Baptist or Anglican or Pentecostal, not every one of them there are born again. No Jesus Christ. So whatever anybody else says, everybody will stand before God. And I'm very comfortable here. I sense the Spirit of God moving in this place. And I know that God is here. I fellowship with the redeemed Christian Church of God. So why are you in CIS Church? Jesus established CIS Church, like redeemed. I believe that in heaven there is no redeemed, there is no CIS. These are children of God born again spirit filled like me. The present Baba Aladra was born in 1922 at Omo, Aron, Kwara State of Nigeria. He became a member of the CNS Church in 1938. He worked with the railway from 1944 to 1958 before proceeding to England in 1961. He is one of the pioneer members that started Cherubim and Seraphim Church in England. He is a seasoned administrator, a computer guru, lawyer, an engineer, and a great teacher of God's word. It is very interesting to know that the annual spiritual gathering of God's children in the camp started some time ago by the Cherubim and Seraphim Church. The supernatural program was born in 1969 with the name Mount Horeb. The program is an ordained gathering by God with reflective examples from the Bible. The mount is a symbol of God's presence with his people as demonstrated by Christ and Moses on the hill for God's direction and purpose. Mount Horeb is a spiritual concept that takes place in a space of one week. During the retreat, the first two days are restricted for intensive lectures on the significance of Mount Horeb and the prophetic unction that will transcend the children of God on the mountain top. The Mount Horeb program comes up the first week in May annually and the Monday of that week, Mondays and Tuesdays were set aside for holding seminars to be able to give some education to our prophets, spiritual upliftment for them so that they will not be not well educated on the field where they go to practice their prophetic ministry. On Montore, they learn to pray, they learn to teach the Bible to others, they participate in quizzes, and at the end of the program, they are lifted spiritually to be able to at least answer questions from outsiders, unbelievers, and Christians alike who are not conversant with what goes on in the seraph. By the grace of God, the children of CNS are the future generation of this church. We are tired of building churchgoers. We want to build Christians. And the only way to start so that we can have a brand set of uh, CNS seraphs is to start with the children, teaching them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine, and then giving them an understanding of what the CNS stands for and how God called us. The lectures are presented by seasoned spiritual leaders of the gospel. 
It is after the two days that the participants move to the mountain top. The mountain top is a restricted area where God's power is put into manifestation with the name of Jesus Christ. For those that believe their conditions can be transformed through prayers. One of the major events that takes place during the gathering is the ordination of prophets and prophetess by the spiritual father of the CNS, Baba Aladura. The ordination is usually a time for mixed feeling because it is not every attended prophet or prophetess that is ordained. What's criteria is that one, they must have a divine calling. We must make sure that they are called by God. After which they are sent into seven stations for spiritual verification and confirmation. It is then we now screen them to know what, who they are, their gifts, what they have been doing, what they hope to do, their own vision in life, and how they win souls for Christ. At the same time, we want to really know uh, their ability in the church, what they are up for, what they are planning to do, and how far they can maintain uh, discipline within the Church of Christ. When you are come by God, God expects you to be trained. Moses was trained in the wilderness. Jesus was trained in the wilderness. And the disciples were trained by him for three years. If the pastor says he's called and he does not want to be trained, then he is ignoramus. He will never know his left from his right in ministry. Before their ordination, they are subjected to various trainings and prophetic courses to develop their spiritual life. The 2007 Mount Horeb was a very successful outing with participants within and outside the country. Notably were participants from London and America who traveled for the program in spite of their tight schedule. Year 2007 Mount Horeb spiritual exercise witnessed a lot of activities such as prayers, teachings, preaching, Bible quiz, Holy Communion, Thanksgiving, testimonies, interpretations of visions, just to mention but a few. One of the most exciting moments of the camp was the historical visit of Larry Teriba, aka Atorishe, an icon in the gospel music, who thrilled the participants with his unique style of music. <laughs> The musical organ of the church was fantastic in playing as they collaborated with different artists within the country. In spite of the challenges, a lot of participants showed their glowing tribute to the tireless organizers of Mount Horeb. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Wale Ejalunin. Okay, Wale. From which district, sir? From Dakibu district, Abuja. Okay. Abuja. So, what are your experiences about this uh, fantastic uh, fiesta? You've called it fantastic, and there's no other name better than that. My name is Adeleke Adison, I'm the district organizer Abuja. Abuja, that's fantastic. So what are your experiences about this uh, fantastic program? Well, it's been so wonderful. We give God the glory for all he has done for us in this holy order. We thank God that we planned it this year and it was successful. And the Spirit of the Lord came down. Thank God for the nation entirely because of the new dispensation that was around. We thank God, we pray that um, no uh, violence shall happen during the election. And we thank God, God took absolute control all through the election period. Happy to meet you. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Ola Kbeju, Ola Tunde, I'm from Kano State. So what are your experiences about the program? By the time you go home to Kano, what are you going to be telling them about the sweet experiences of this uh, occasion? Oh, we just give God the glory that at least everything started successfully and it ended successfully. And um, at least 
for what I've seen, I really know God is really dwelling in Kerubo and Seraphim and in Hansa's prayers very well. Even before I leave this place, I'm beginning to see that my prayer has been answered. My name, sir. My name is Prophet Jide. Prophet Jide. Yes. Oh, I'm very excited. I'm tapping from a prophet. Being a musician, you've been here for more than six, seven years as a coordinator. Yes. So, how do you feel? What What are those problems you've faced? We don't want any rough songs because we have learned our lessons back. We now kept a group that whatever song you want to sing is that will not glorify the name of God. We don't want it. My name is Pastor Prophet Isaiah Domoye. So what are your experiences about this uh, program? Uh, we, we, we give God the glory and we thank the living God for the opportunity He gives to us. Every year, every first Wednesday of the May, we do climb this mountain to come out and pray to God and appreciate His goodness in our life. And that's why we are here this year. In Israel, Prophetess Oluwatoyi Akimbola from Kingsland District, Lagos. Okay, now, as a prophetess, how many people did you pray for during the occasion? Wow. Uh, with the grace and uh, with the help of the Lord, I pray for many people as I can, as many as I can. Now, we have a lot of things on ground that uh, before somebody is prayed for, the person pays money. Is it true? At all. It's never done in CNS Church movement because uh, the salvation of every soul is free from the Lord. Okay. Now, how can you compare your experience in Israel when you went for pilgrimage and the experience you have on the mountain here? Mm, there's no, there's, there, 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 there's not much difference from the mountain in Israel and the mountain the experience here in Nigeria. But uh, the little experience I can say is different from Israel's zone is, you know, as an African, what we do here is a little bit different from what we do in Israel, because uh, in Israel, it's an individual, uh, we have an individual prayer group, and uh, that's individual prayer, but here we have group, joint praying group, and uh, for people we have seen for a long time, we have the grace to mix with each other and to say Happy New Year once again every year. Hello, good day. What's your name and where are you from? We are, I'm Sina Apostle Shagudu Amala from Kano State Suburb Quarter. Just to worship with the prophet and the prophetess on the month of Eurip. I'm pertaining to we that are not prophet or prophetess. Sometimes might be on mufti, sometimes might be on uniform. My name is Bosse. Bosse, from where? From Katsina Road. Katsina Road. So what do you have to say about this uh, Mount Horat Fiesta? It's very interesting and I like and God is doing his work in in everybody's hearts and I like it. Did you came with a friend? Who did you invite? No, they invited me. Okay. Do you worship here? Are you a member of Cherubim and Seraphim? No. Where do you fellowship? Yeah. What is the name of your church? Christ Apostolic Church. Okay. Hey, madam. Hello. What's your name? My name is Mrs. Bello. Mrs. Bello. It's not, it's not to come to Orioke that matters. Your art, the way you live with Huma, the way you live with your neighbors, and the way you behave as a Christian matters. So are you going to be here next year by God's grace? By the grace of God, I will be here. I will put on my, my gar garment. Thank you very much. Please, uh, may we know who you are, your district, and uh, the testimony you shared yesterday. Uh, my name is Sino Apostle Prophet Taiwo Oduyeba. I am from Ifewo New District from Ibadan. Uh, the testimony I shared yesterday uh, is a very big testimony that even surprised me and that makes my family happy, okay, and uh, the, because the Lord shows His merciful love in my life in my wife's lives in my family and it makes my family happy because uh, I got an accident February 26 in fact I wake up April 8 you say uh, I'm very very much happy because God makes me to be alive to even witness uh, this month Eribu of this year because he now take all the bitterness uh, in my life, in my way, both my family, he now turn into sweet. Uh, God surprised me, as I say, very well. 
Uh, he said, the doctor that even treated me, uh, that's Dr. Ahmed. He was surprised that uh, I can still stand up and walk. And they, they, they even feel happy asking me uh, which uh, uh, re, uh, religion the life believed you. Uh, I told them uh, I'm a Christian and I'm from Cherubin and Seraphu Church Movement. Uh, all the days of my life I've been given thanks and in fact uh, the arm of God that on me and according to my call I now move more, more than before to now evangelize, evangelizing so people that did not know what they called God will now know that yes there is God. It is not human being, it's God. It is not an abolish, it is God. It's God that did it. He did it. camp was devoid of crime because the security operatives and brigades did a wonderful job. We thank God no issue was beyond our control. We thank God everything was under control, no problem, no uh, issue of theft in, in any corner. The medical organ was also up and down by making sure that none among the participants was a victim to health problems. Our objective is to serve the people coming to the Mount Horeb. Because some, some of them have accidents, many of them are ill, either due to uh, the heat, due to bad food, due to some unknown reasons, they fall ill. And it's our duty and to take care of them. That is why we're here. And I'm not here alone, I'm not the only doctor. We are about, about four or five doctors working along and many nurses. Uh, it is believed that uh, prayers can solve any health problem. Because initially some people, some prophets told me that this is a place for health restoration. So why are they not praying they are coming for medical uh, or scientific uh, help instead of uh, spiritual help from the Lord? Do you think many people have believed? That's number one, they haven't got to believe. Secondly, God will not do everything for you. If you know you can, where you can help yourself, if you can help yourself, God will not come and help you there. Simple, somebody who has hypertension, for example, the blood pressure going to 250, 100. You pray for him. But God has given some people the knowledge, the understanding, how you can bring this blood pressure down. Then it is for us to apply the medicine so that the the blood pressure can come down. God will not come down and feed you. He can provide food, but he don't cook the food for you and he will not give you the spoon feed you. There are so many things we ought to do for ourselves and that's what uh, we are doing here. Most importantly is that the people, they haven't got that 100% belief in prayer and they need some assistance. And that's what we are giving them here. The feeding was a class of its own because the food was enough to satisfy the participants. 
at the end of the spiritual journey, it was time to bid farewell to Mount Horeb. I'm so happy indeed. There are so many people that there's no room for them. I, am, I thank God and I'm praying that God will give us a bigger place than this. God will bless you. We are very happy indeed and thank you the press for coming over. God will bless you all. Mount Horeb as an answer grant for human request will always linger on the minds of the faithful. My name is Mosina Pastor Prophet Christopher Alani Um uh, We thank God today that I'm still alive. Uh, when we started uh, this Mount Horeb, uh, be like uh, a play. But today we thank God that it has been uh, expanded. Uh, those people that we were then, our Baba Akarele, the false uh, professing prophet, uh, is now late. He has died seven years ago. And he performed a miracle, uh, many miracles. So the old man, he died seven years ago. And uh, like uh, Baba Jiboto Shotu, he's an assistant. And many people like that, they have gone. And they left us now. And many miracles. And uh, those who that uh, fail to deliver children, barren, many things have happened to them and they have got uh, children. Every year we, they do things here. And those who that uh, enemy are tied their womb, when they get Benin, some of them have delivered on this mountain. My name is Prophet Olai Kaliu. I'm the Chairman PRO, Public Relations Unit for the National Council of Prophets. And my responsibility is to provide an information desk for the Prophet to be a bridge between non seraph and seraph, a bridge between non prophets and prophets, a center where people can come for information and a center whereby we document what we do every year in terms of souvenirs and other things with even compiling the lecture notes and handouts for easy access for people uh, to uh, fall, fall back on by the time they get back to their station. Yes, we have ordinary members of the church. We have what we call seers and we have people that we call prophets. Okay, seers. So what is the difference between a seer and a prophet? The difference between a seer and a prophet is a seer is a person that God has given some particular message. You understand? Naturally everybody starts as a seer, but not everybody becomes a prophet. For you to become a prophet, you need to be called into it. If you look into the Bible, we have a lot of people that are called seers, they see visions, but they were never ordained as, pro as prophets. Do you understand? So a prophet is a man that has the prophetic word, that prophesy unto people, not necessarily a person that sees vision. Why is it that you don't advertise for your programs? Well, our church, the greatest miracle happens within us and we don't publicize them because we don't see our church as a PLC, as a company. The strategy of advertisement is about having a product to sell to the world. Well, I, I think there is a conception that Oreb is meant for profits and definitely yes in the sense that is an annual event for all the prophets of the CNS movement church to congregate kind of a, 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 a real present time for them to come and rededicate themselves to God and to upgrade their knowledge of the scripture. So it's only for the prophets, not for ordinary members or seers? Yes, it's for the prophets, but in the, in, in the congregation you have other people coming in with their problems. We are, but we must attend to them. It's like operating a kind of a faith clinic, you know, taking care of them. So we keep them, we take them along. But funny enough, 
If you watch the television in NTA, in Bini, in Abuja, and in Kaduna, you will see some clips of this program on here. Because we, we got some kind of a feedback along that line, and we have uh, made up our mind that, okay, let's open up the program to everybody so that everyone will have an access to what we do here. The Cherubim and Seraphim Church in Overseas was founded on the 14th of August 1963 because of the discrimination and racialism against the black race. The establishment of the foreign mission transpired exactly after the 40th years of prediction by the founder. Moses Oremolade predicted that the church would move out of black Africa continent to overseas after 40 years of her establishment. Today, the church has over 50 branches all over America and Europe. Europe district consists of uh, all countries in Europe and we have churches in about five of them at the moment and we have about uh, 12 churches in London itself. But I'm based in London. My address is number one, Solon Road, London, SW2, 5UU. And that is the headquarters for Europe District at the moment. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you spoke about uh, having other uh, branches in other countries. So can you mention the countries so that we'll be abreasted with them? Yeah, Italy, Amsterdam, Germany, France, we are trying to establish that of, um, uh, it, no, we've got it already, it's uh, Russia, we're trying to establish now. Because of the Chechen, Chechen um, problem there, the person who's going to steer the ship down there has moved back to Russia town. So um, we are in the preparation of that. By the end of this year, that will take off. We have this uh, notion about Cherubian Seraphim uh, churches that uh, maybe uh, they are occultic. Uh, a lot of things have been said about them. So can you debunk this uh, misconception? Yes. Um, yes, we had the problem over there in UK. And that is why we applied to join the World Council of Churches. We joined the um, churches together in London and England. So we attend their quarterly meetings. From there, we are able to enlighten them about our um, mood of worshiping. They come to televise us at times and then they send representatives from World Council of Churches to us to see how we uh, worship. We told them our tenant, tenant of uh, worship is uh, Bible and Jesus Christ, nothing else. Question of uh, this um, occultic uh, idea, we make them to understand that it's not working. I am one of the trustees of um, um, the radio for the Christians in London, which is based in Southwest One, that is in Victoria, and they call it Premier Radio. We established that radio in uh, 1988. I was one of those who, who worked for the establishment. So our people go there now to preach before they ban us from coming there because. Uh, some one boy from Ghana said our mood of worshipping is occultic in nature. But when they've seen us worshipping, even recently in, um, in November, we attended a certain um, assembly in Westminster, as Westminster Hall, with the other churches, Pentecostal, Methodist, but there are all sorts of churches in the UK. Thank you, sir. And the, they've just given that radio now a license as a digital radio for London for the Christians. All right, sir. Now, uh, as the chairman of uh, the Cherubian Seraphim uh, movement uh, in Europe, what are the challenges you are facing? Uh, because we're talking about a different culture from 
that of Africans. So how are you coping with your challenges there? Yeah, um, our ch challenges there is enormous somehow. Um, but we are coping. Um, at a certain period, because of our being, uh, our worship is long, we lose members. We have now reduced our mode of worship to about two hours. The most, the longest is two and a half hours now, so that people will come back to us. Then uh, we usually um, mount our prayers in Yoruba, but now we've um, changed it to English now in all our churches. Where we speak our Yoruba, there should be somebody there to interpret in English. Although we don't go dialects uh, like Hausa, Ibos, we don't use that. We use only English to mount our um, mood of worshiping. And also, um, you know, the something gives them a certain attraction. That is our people when they are in spirit and they are talking in tongues, people get to wonder that, what power are they using? That's why they call us maybe uh, we're using a secret or black power. So we told them to understand that uh, this is the spirit of God that's working in the person who's giving the message. And as uh, in case of Moses, God used him, and it's the same thing that's happening to all our members up to today, that the God is working in us and is the one directing us. All the, mission, all the visions we've given is started by God. It's not somebody uh, thinking about uh, this and talk it out, no. It's not me believe, it's genuine from God. Uh, well, the Africans are accepting the, they are accepting the, the movement, but it appears that uh, we find it difficult for the whites just to join out at the moment. Why, sir? Well, because uh, they think it, it is a traditional religion. Okay. Now, if we have this uh, wrong notion by them that it is a traditional religion, what are you people doing there to debunk this misconception, to make it more modified so that they will appreciate it like other Pentecostal churches? We are trying, we have a Pentecostal youth, we have the youth, we have a, everything, we are changing our mode of worship now. Okay, now can you tell us those uh, areas you've uh, impacted change? Evangelism. Mm, another one, sir? A youth program. Okay. Bible studies. The CNS Movement Church is a unique congregation with a lot of positive traits. These positive traits are comprehensively unified to form the doctrines of the Spiritual Commission. Every doctrine that is practiced in CNS is in conformity with the ethics of the Bible. When you go to the book of the Bible, if you look at the call of Moses, the call of Moses in um, Exodus 3, Exodus 3, 4, it was God himself that used to call a prophet. If you call, look at the call of uh, Saul that became Paul, you can see that uh, it's God that calls. And when you are called, you see all signing such a person. And you, you being called, we know that you are called by God. What are the signs, sir? One. Prophecy. Two. When you pray, the prayer will be answered. Normally, everybody God answers prayers, but when a fellow human being brings his prob problems before you, you pray for him, it will be answered. Okay, sir. Now, uh, from the whole congregation, you are wearing a different uh, a, a, a spiritual gown. Why? I'm the head. Okay, you are the head. 
Now, what are the importance of uh, this candles? Uh, because most of the times we hear a lot of things concerning the candles relating to cherubim and seraphim. So, what is the importance of the candle to your worship or doctrine? If you go to the book of John 8 12, Jesus, Jesus is the light. If you go to Revelation 6, uh, Revelation 1, 16 to 20, you will see that these seven candles we, we fix on is having a meaning. What is the meaning, sir? One, the one at the middle, when is seven? The one at the middle is representing Christ, being the light. One represents a Christian. When it's about seven or three, it represents the congregation. We are the light of the world. For a Christian being the light of the world, we should not move in darkness. So that is the significance of what we are doing. The Catholic religion happens to be the first religion, Christian religion in the world. They are still using candles. It's one of our doctrine. It's one of our doctrine. It's part of our doctrine. To use the candle is part of our doctrine. To wear the white garment is part of the, our doctrine. To shout hallelujah is part of the doctrine. To shout hosanna. When you shout hallelujah, you are praising the Lord. When you shout hosanna, when you go to the book of Psalm 118, 24, 26. You will get the meaning of Hosanna there. You are begging God to send you peace and comfort in life. That is what is there. What of the bear? The bear and the oil. Thank you. The anointing oil. This is an anointing oil. You use women to, to keep your body shine. So, when even with the dead body, you use oil for the dead body. So, when you want to anoint a person, putting him in a good, a, a, an important position, you must anoint him with oil. When David was anointed, uh, when David was to, make, to be made a king. He was anointed. Samuel the same. When Aaron was to be made a prophet, the same. Moses the same. So we are following the Bible doctrine. What about the bear? The bear. To, to get everybody alerted that it's time for service. Okay, now what is the importance of, is it an altar? Do we still give our sacrifices? It's, it's not everybody that can come in. The leader of service is to be there, to give him the respect. Do we give our sacrifices like killing, uh, maybe a ram and burning it? Against our religion, we are not to worship any other thing than the only living God. Is only one. So it is used for only candles. The altar is used for only candles. It's only for candle and the holy water. If you can see the water there and the olive oil, we didn't open it. By the time it comes out there, it's powerful. That water. God that get put water into coconut can get into that water. He, he, with with the modern civilization and the sickness is going with the ear these days you can't open your water okay so why is it that cherubim and seraphim members are associated with dreadlocks why and uh, somebody told me again that your churches are very close to the streams why or waters dreadlocks dada 
Allah. We are not to worship any other thing than the living God. So the water is... If you, if you see any church by the side of the stream, just because of space, is, is the one in, in is our churches in the uh, Casina Road, very close to the stream, and that is the headquarters worldwide. Okay, what of Dada? A lot of people have Dada here. Why? Why is it so, sir? That is not Dada. They call it. Sorry, sir. When you go to the Bible, Samson was like that. We call it the Nazareth. There are some elected children that are called that are made that way. But when you are a Nazareth, there are some precaution that is against that Nazareth. You can't drink, you can't fornicate, you can't go closer to the dead body. If there is a corpse and you go there, Automatically, you must scrape it. Automatically, you must scrape it. Where you go closer to the dead body and you don't scrape it, you are no more a Nazareth. All what we are doing, we go by the Bible. It's not anything worldly. As a spiritual leader, how do you cope with the negative impressions people have given your movement? Because some people have said all sorts of things. So how are you coping? How do you respond when they what, talk? What people say does not matter. The saying of a fellow human being does not matter. You know whom you worship and let whom you worship knows you. That is all. Just Keep to the commandment of God. What people are saying does not matter. It doesn't move you. Unless you are not a good Christian. Where you are a good Christian, there are commands in the Bible. Just keep to it. What people say, people are coming to, to, to ask for prayers from us. And when they go out, they say, we are not good. There are other churches here. Because of this hill, because they needed our prayers, they go in white garments. Because if they don't go in white garments, they cannot come here. We are having pastors here of other religion. So let us stop deceiving ourselves. What is good? is good. On a I was born a Muslim. I'm highly ruled by name. But today you are delivered. Okay. Sir, on a final note, what advice do you have for the people that will be watching this documentary? Give us five advice, two for the youths and three for the elders. Parents should treat their children the way of the Lord. Parents that are not honest will not know that their children are watching them. Parents are duty bound to be honest. Where you are not honest, you cannot produce a good child. With the adults, you should live by sample. A good Christian should keep to the commandment of God, the commandment of the government. If you don't keep to the commandment of the government, you are not a good Christian. What of your advice for your children, the youths too? What the parents are doing is what the children will emulate. Now, I can see you with something on the head like a Rastafarian. Do you believe in the principle of Bob Marley? Are you a Rastafarian because of dreadlocks? Uh, 
People call it Rastafarian, but it's not Rastafarian in the Bible. It is what, sir? It is dreadlock. What is the meaning? Because formerly, I am. That is somebody assigned for God. Because professionally, I am a printer, and it is these printing activities that took me to the army. I was a soldier. They allowed you with this? No, I I, I was not with this. But it is really my service that I was not in the movement before. One day I went to the headquarters. That is as far back as 1965 in Kaduna year. I went, I learned that somebody went in, in trance and I went to the headquarters to go and have a look. You know, as a soldier, I was in uniform. That is how the Holy Spirit took, took hold of me. And I went in trance for complete seven days. So it was after. I find out that God has something real, uh, standard in stock for me. Have you not suffered any social embarrassment with these uh, dreadlocks? Mm. Maybe uh, somebody calling your child uh, from his school or her school that your father has a dreadlocks, like uh, maybe a Rastafarian. How do you feel when you have such challenges with these dreadlocks? I was not born with this uh, dreadlock before, as I told you. It is the duty of a competent soldier to shave his head at least twice in a week, so of which I did perfectly well. But when the call of Almighty God came, there is nothing I can do. So any, I don't feel I don't feel I don't feel bad when people call me that I am a Rastafarian or a dreadlock. It is the sign of Almighty God that is on me. I feel it is a crown. Mm, actually, what I want to say is that. Many people are ignorant about this church. They believe that this church or members of this church are very occultic in nature because of the prayer session, praying with candle and going to the seashore to go and pray. Without knowing that it is not so. And when you are talking about Pentecostal churches, I want you to understand that majority of those who are in the Pentecostal church today are children of our church. And for me, same in Yoruba, Kino Kenya, Kiruba, the Serafu. What shall in the world is the cherubim and the seraphim. What I'm saying is that if you are talking about the redeem, the, man, the redeem was uh, cherubim and seraphim before Adibui came up. Adibui was invited. He, he, I don't need to tell you the story much. He was invited. He was a lecturer at Unilag. He wasn't a member of the church. He was only coming to translate and uh, he pleases the Spirit of God with what he's doing. Look at somebody like Kumuyi. Kumuyi is not a new person in our church. Look at somebody like Kumuyi, living faith today. He's a born seraph from Umwano. Look at Azikoye Banji in Jos. He's a born seraph. Look at uh, Tundi Olaya, PJ. We thank God for all of them. They are all seraphs. They are spreading the tentacle where we could not move for now. Because our own foundation is based on illiteracy. But we thank God that has been eradicated, that has been removed. Many members are now learned, many of them are in schools. Like I talking to you, I'm currently doing my BA in theology. So matter of separation into Pentecostal, or whatever you want to call it, I want you to know that many of those Pentecostal per se are really members of the church who, are, if you look at the pattern of preaching, the pattern of whatever they do is in line with what we are doing in our church. Is in line with what their fathers, mother met before they left. And we thank God that since the beginning, since the foundation, the establishment of movement, we've not had anything that we will call separation. We thank God we have not separated, and by the special grace of God, we shall not separate. The educational segment of the ministry has yielded success in the lives of her members. The church has nursery and primary schools, secondary schools, and a university to complement the intellectual standards of her members. The field of education is not only restricted to professional and intellectual knowledge, but also orients her members on theological training. Presently, there are some standard theological colleges of CNS in Eloring, Abuja, and Kaduna. The CNS Bible College in Kaduna is an affiliate of Ramona's University, California in USA. The social center of the church is a class of church for conference, seminar and events. 
As a result of the problem of accommodation, the church has built a guest inn called Travelers Inn to alleviate its accommodation. In the poor culture of youths, there is a standard book where books are sold at cheaper rates to encourage this ugly trend. The story of Cherubim and Seraphim will be incomplete without the new initiative of the present Baba Ladra, the most reverend S.A. Abidu. The initiative is called Hefzibar Project. Hefzibar is a visionary project which is aimed at working out a turnaround program that will spear point realistic ideas for the growth of the church. The project has a lifespan of five years. Chief Guru Hezibar as a new name connotes and success with a set of projects which projects are evangelism, women development, youth development, education, technology, advocacy, and financial development. We have a project FBA and we hope to be able to help the orphanage, the widows, uh, old people, those who have no less privileged people, we want them. That's one of our mo most concern. Oh, I don't, uh, let me quickly tell you that we started less than, well, less than a year uh, and from the, a year ago. And in that project, we've been doing many things. Presently, we have a cyber cafe at the, the college, a, a children and some college. We have just a, a, a ship on the door with uh, something to, to be uh, clothes and the computers. Anything to help the people, to help them. and if people can do us to happen, because we are going to have a uh, home for the parents, home for the widows, and home for the less privileged. We want to start a service for people. We want to help the poor, the people who have that son, not who have children, black children, but they can't afford this school. I have to help those people. So I think we can Nigeria as a whole. We have our in, in Jesus' name. Yeah, um, one of the major projects that is going on at the moment is the Siba project, which is, head, uh, which is sponsored by the uh, Supervisor, uh, the spiritual father, the head of the movement. Of, um, among the things that have been done um, by the is to educate people and to do what we do to engineering and to be able to liaise and, and relate with people of different races who are present in the United Kingdom, who are our host our countries. The major significance of the project is to be positive and holistic to people's lives. The project has constructed a classic cafe to project IT training for pastors and prophets. Other skill at training includes black making industry, fishery and poultry, and a sustainable cooperative farming. It has become a fact that every spiritual ministry is faced with enormous challenges, ranging from negative criticism to unknown.